Hi, I'm Sherry Kwong Taylor, and you are listening to the Business Behind Fundraising podcast. Now, this season, we're starting with a lot of the fundamentals. One of those that I'm anxious to talk about today is how do we find major donors? Now, if I'm real honest, this is one of the uh, most common uh, questions I get so often. Uh, sometimes it comes when I'm on that first initial call with someone who's reached out to say, can you help me? Um, and, and I'm talking about how the process we're going to take, how we're going to raise more unrestricted revenue, and, and it never fails. Someone says, that sounds great, but we don't have any major donors, and, and uh, I don't know any, and so how do we find them? Now, I'm going to ask you to do a bit of a reframe today with that question even, and I want you to think of it in, uh, from the angle of Less of that uh, finding and we're on a hunt and we gotta we gotta find the rich people. I want to ask you, are you doing the things that actually attract investment level donors? Are we speaking their language? Do they understand our need? Because too many organizations come to me on the hunt for major donors, but they're actually not doing the things to attract donors. So I want to unpack that a bit for you today. Now, first, this finding concept really assumes that you don't know any major donors. You do. You do, right? Do you have access to everybody's bank account? Of course you don't. But I have to tell you so often, I'm sitting in meetings uh, where, where my clients, where, where people are talking about um, you know, the, the, somebody, right, that, that I actually know is giving very generously to other organizations that I would never share. Um, and they, they know them and they're saying, well, I don't know anybody. I just don't know anybody. And so I want you to really, really pause and look what's behind that. Because you don't get to decide uh, if someone should give to your organization. Your job is to share the need of the organization. Your job is not to focus on the hunt. Your job is to educate, network connect and really share all the awesome things that the organization is doing. Share how lives are changing. Share the need of the organization. Uh, be that mouthpiece. And so sometimes we, we tend to not even do that because we think, well, I, I don't know, my friends don't care about that. Um, they certainly aren't going to give at the level that I know that we need. Um, we got to really look behind that because that's really our own issue. Um, sometimes we're fearful we're not we're not going to talk about the organization right, or um, you know we're, we're nervous about what we're doing, and so we just want to get through the conversation really quick. And that's actually leaving money on the table, and it's leaving um, the opportunity on the table for your amazing friends and colleagues and network to actually invest in a mission and invest in a mission that's changing lives. So I want you to make sure that you're not the one standing in the way of that donor understanding the need and giving to the organization. Now, the other thing I'll say about the major donor world is um, sometimes we think, well, major donor, I don't know anybody who would give 50K to use that number today. Um, if you're, you might be a, a $10 million organization, but you're heavily funded by government revenue or program revenue or or foundations, and your charitable giving um, kind of uh, revenue is small, right? Maybe it's only a million dollars, maybe it's $500,000, but you need it to grow because you need that flexibility. You want to invest in overhead and infrastructure. Um, you need that, that cash, right? To do payroll or build your reserve, whatever it is. We have to make sure that you're not waiting for the one big whale that one rich person you think you know who's going to take four years to get to without waiting for them to come and save the day. It'd be nice, wouldn't it? Like, maybe. But your mission is worthy of being supported from so many different levels, right? We want people giving $50, $100, $500, $1,000, $5,000. So don't be so hung up um, if a major gift for your organization is $1,000. Uh, even if you're a multi-million dollar organization, um, those gifts are super important too. Don't hear me say they're not. Every gift size is important, but do not get hung up on uh, you know, a major 
donor is a whale. And so, gosh, I, I don't know them or it would take me forever to get to that one person. I have so many uh, you know, board members even waiting years to finally feel like, well, maybe I can introduce you to that one person or that one colleague of mine who, um, you know, who has the means to invest heavily. And gosh, what a wasted opportunity, I would say, to, um, to the rest of their network that um, who really would want to invest in your mission. And perhaps they just don't know you need the money or perhaps um, we haven't had the right conversation to really understand um, that actually their life story actually does really connect well with what we're doing. And they, they would welcome the opportunity to know about your mission and invest in your mission. Now, this brings us to unpacking one of the biggest issues I see. And that issue is, um, you know, if we want to be finding major donors, you know what I mean here. Um, we have to ask ourselves, are we doing the things? Um, are you empowering your organization, your staff, um, to be doing the types of things that attract major donors? Let's dig into this a little bit deeper. Now, yes, donors want to give to organizations, um, you know, the story. Uh, they want to they hear you passionately share uh, the, your mission, uh, the crisis you're solving, how lives are changing, all of that, right? Like that's the story buzz we hear and I fully support that. Um, but here's what I wanna say. Major donors need more. Investment level donors need more. They need you to not just stop there, not just stop with story. Um, they need you to really um, move into a different type of conversation. And there's money involved in this conversation, right? Now, here's where um, maybe people are starting to sweat a little bit, um, but I don't want to be pushy. I don't want to be begging. I don't want to be that used car salesman. Great. You don't have to be either of those people. Uh, we don't want to be those people. None of us want to engage with those people. We know that the best sales relationship really comes from um, relationships where we are. It is more of that uh, that peer-to-peer -peer relationship. Um, we uh, we know that there's a mission aligned win-win and we know that because we've really taken the time to get to know them. We haven't forced the issue and turned into the used car salesman. Um, there's a natural comfort level in the relationship. Um, so often it's like, we need the money. We don't have the pipeline. Let's just go ask. That is never going to work. So you have to be in deep relationship with people and slow it down. I don't like that either. I want you to get the revenue and get it in and move on to the next. We've got to slow it down, especially if you're looking for investments. Um, you know, this is a significant decision for somebody sometime. So take the time and serve them and lead them and answer all the questions that they need asked. Okay, so in addition to heart and stories and um, all the things that, that everybody's so good at these days, I want to make sure that your team knows how to pivot into the financial story of the organization. Uh, do they know how to share the organization's true financial need? Um, they need to hear that their gift is going to be a good investment. Um, they need to know that their mission for giving um, really aligns with your mission, right? Not in that slimy way that none of us want to want to do. Um, but but investment level donors need to be asked. Um, they need to have uh, financials presented to them in a really great way to really share the need. Like you know, could I could I share with you our seven million dollar need this year? Could I could I kind of run you through some some slides that really articulate what that looks like, why we need it? how we spend money, uh, where our revenue comes from. Um, these are the types of things that investment level donors need to hear. These are the things that I rarely, rarely hear fundraisers talking about. This is where I spend tons of time coaching um, people who say, I don't know if they want to hear that. I don't know if they need to hear that. I'm going to tell you, when my clients start having investment level conversations with connectors, with their network, with their board. 
people start seeing you differently. People start seeing them differently. And in so many conversations, that donor says, oh my gosh, you've never shared this with me. And we're starting to speak their language. Whose language are we speaking? That CEO, that entrepreneur, that community leader, um, that person who has probably also had to sit at the table and talk about investments and ask for money very often. As we conclude today, if you're stopping at heart and stories, if you're stopping at statistics and, and here's how a life has changed, um, if you're only doing that, just keep doing that. And you're not methodically walking a donor, sharing, explaining, welcoming investment level conversations, you will never attract major donors. The tricky part of this is if you've never done it before, it feels super scary. Um, that's okay. You can learn how to do this. I don't care what your background is. You do not have to have a financial degree to do this. Um, but so many of our team members don't, have never learned to do this. Um, it's not their fault. They may be our experts at something else. But this is where so much money is left on the table in the major donor realm. And so if you do one thing today after hearing this, uh, I would ask you to stop being on the hunt. Stop trying to find major donors and start doing the things that actually attract them to your amazing mission. Thanks so much for tuning in today. If you enjoyed this episode, please take a minute to like and subscribe and ring the bell to be notified of the weekly content that I put out. On the other hand, if you're listening to this on audio podcasts, please leave a review uh, on Apple Podcasts. And with that, I'll see you next week.